What's the matter? You deep or something? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if this is your first time. Uh, please have a look around the channel to see what you like. Uh, I do lots of different things connected to books and some other things. It's called Books, Songs and Other Magic because there's lots of music related things as well. But it's mostly books. And I'm right at the end, right at the end of the library tour. So there's been, I don't know how many videos, 20 odd videos I think so far. And this has to be the end because now it's getting confusing. So this is like what's left. So... Um, this includes some stuff that was by my bedside table thing, which I've now rearranged, and some things that I knew I hadn't included yet. Um, so there are a few other bits that I'm just not going to include because they're too far buried into the loft, or I'm not. I think they might have been in a previous video. So this is the stuff I know have I haven't mentioned yet. So there's a big chunk of it that's the books that I bought for the folks folk tales and folk stories uh, challenge, which has been a bit stalled. So um, this year I'm gonna do more to uh, make it a better thing and make sure, put some time into it. So um, anyway, let's, let's talk about the books I, that I, that are just the last ones left. So there's The Missing uh, by Sarah Langan. That's a, uh, quite a good horror book that I bought from a booktube recommendation. So um, Rachel from Shades of Orange recommended this and it's good, it's good fun. Uh, psychology of time travel. Oh, they all fall down. Um, psychology of time travel uh, by Kate Mascarenas. Um, and this was brought literally to um, develop my novel, uh, my knowledge of time travel books um, because I'm doing time travel videos. So I haven't read this yet, but this is on my TBR to read. Um, I'm going to actually use these ones first. They're all, all about to fall. Uh, there's Rabbits by Terry Miles. So I'd heard a bit about this book and then I saw it um, quite cheap. Um, it's a little bit, it leans a bit, so you can tell it's already been read. But uh, yeah, this is supposed to be good. Have you read this? Um, this is a rarity. So this is a 19th century book, I think, maybe even be earlier than that. Uh, 1824, it was written. James Hogg, The Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner. I don't normally buy books that old, but it was intriguing. So I thought I'd give it a go because it could be a little bit different to what you normally get for that kind of period. So James Hogg, have you read this? I know there's been a couple of reviews of this on Booktube recently. This is a great book. Stephen Graham Jones, The Only Good Indians. I'm going to read everything else he's done. There is a review of this on my channel from probably about a year ago, maybe. But uh, it's really good. Really good book. The Only Good Indians. It's a horror book um, by a Native American author and it's got Native American uh, concerns in it as well. It's really good. Um, this is one of the X heroes books. So I've got four of these. I don't know if all four have been featured in these videos, but uh, uh, I quite like them. They're a bit of fun. Uh, it's basically superheroes versus zombies. <laughs> and that character there, I can't remember her name, but uh, she's the most interesting character, I think. We Are Legion, We Are Bob by Dennis E. Taylor. So this is a book that was re recommended several times by Moid at Media Dev Cult. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. So I bought it and I read it and I was a bit underwhelmed. So I think it might have been me. So I've kept it to reread it, and I've actually, in a minute, I'm going to show you the sequel as well, because I saw the sequel quite cheap, and I bought it because, I don't know, I, I feel like if I read this again, I'll like it more. So, you know, you, you can do that, can't you? Um, you can you can read something and feel like you're not really connecting to it because you're not in the right frame of mind to be reading. So, so yeah, we are Legion, we are Bob. I'm hoping it was going to be better the second time around. This... I absolutely loved first time around. That's Adam Roberts Better. So there's a review of this as well on the channel. It's a really good book. And Adam Roberts is quite an interesting writer, I think. And uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, when animals can talk, um, how would they approach a society where uh, meat eating is, is, is um, reconsidered and there's laws against... Um, 
particular meat being it and, and, and how you treat animals. Have a read of the book, it's really good. Watch my review of it. Um, oh, there's a review of this on the channel as well. Death and the Penguin by Kirkhoff. This is a Ukrainian book and it's quite bizarre. It's like a spy-ish thing, kind of spy thing, um, where one of the main characters is a penguin. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool, quite quirky. Um, but you've got a real sense of Ukrainian society in the book as well. This is one that uh, I bought really because I was fascinated by the feel of the book. It's got black uh, edges on the pages and it's called Strange Ink. And it's it looks like a bit of a horror book about possession. Uh, it's either that old ghost kind of poltergeisty thing. But I think it's possession. But yeah, Strange Ink uh, is probably really good. Have you read this? I'd love to know if you've read this. I literally bought it from seeing it on the shelves in the shop and thinking it looked good. So, there we go. Talking of horror, Ramsey Campbell, The Count of Eleven. So this is one I found quite cheap, uh, 250, uh, and it's hardback, very good condition. Ramsey Campbell, you can't pass up a cheap Ramsey Campbell if you see one. So he's um, one of the most renowned horror authors. Have you read The Count of Eleven? Let me know, and what did you think of it? More horror, Kim Newman. So this is a book that I've been meaning to buy for a while and uh, I'd kept looking at it and then I couldn't resist it once I found it for £1.50. Anno Dracula. So he's done a bunch of Anno Dracula books and this is like a retelling of, of the Dracula myth with a, in a different time and with people from the historical time, real time, being characters in the book as well. So um, I haven't read it, but I do have a lot of time with Kim Newman. Uh, so yeah, it's probably really good. Have you read that? I know a lot of people have read it. Uh, here we go, we're away from fiction for a second because this is a book all about handmade films. So the amazing true story of handmade films, very naughty boys. Uh, so obviously, um, handmade films were um, an independent company that made the Monty Python films and several other films as well. Uh, and Python connected films like Time Bandits as well. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting story uh, funded by rock stars and all that. Um, Neil Gaiman, Smoke and Mirrors. Um, there's a couple of Neil Gaiman in this lot, I think. But uh, I've got quite a lot of Neil Gaiman books and it's, it could be well be the case that I haven't included every Neil Gaiman book in that I have in these videos. Because I've got quite a lot. Um, and that's a good one, Smoke and Mirrors. Um, two Claire North books here. So I really like Claire North. She's one of my favourite authors. And that was the first book I read by her, Games House, which I really like. And then the big one, the famous one, The First 15 Lives of Harry August. Recommend anybody, everybody to read this. It's a brilliant book. And I've got Chuck Palinick, Lullaby. I don't want to read this until I've read Fight Club and I've got Fight Club sitting on my TBR right there, ready to go. And I've still read it, but I've got a few of his books. This is Lullaby. Lullaby looks really good as well. Um, Carrie Fisher, Wishful Drinking. Uh, she's a really interesting writer. She's got a lot of natural wit to the way she writes. Sometimes, you, I think you've got to be in the right mood for it, though. So you can, can, for me, it can be a bit grating, the, the constant sardonic nature of the writing, but she is definitely witty, and uh, she makes it fun to read. So this is one of her many memoirs. Uh, Bertrand Riss is an old book. Bertrand Russell, Legitimacy versus Industrialism, 1814 to 1848. And this is a little bit knackered, to be fair. Oh, um, but, uh, yeah, a book I wouldn't want to part with. And I've, I, I found this and used it for my history degree. But, uh, you know, Bertrand Russell, you don't want to get rid of Bertrand Russell. Great thinker. Oh, going back to the fiction again. Uh, one of my favourite books, Blake Crouch's Recursion. Fantastic book, and uh, some people even like that more than they like um, Dark Matter, which is interesting. Um, I think they've got a very similar tone. Um, I love it, it's brilliant. Um, so, definitely one of my favourites. Uh, Doing Time, this is the first Jodie Taylor book from her Time Police series. So I've got the Chronicles of St Mary's, and this is like a spin-off series, and this is the first one. I haven't bothered buying any more, because I'm going to read these this one before I buy any more in the series. But... Uh, yeah, I have got that one anyway. Um, biography of... Uh, oh, 
Yeah, here we go. Biography of Billy Idol, Billy Holiday, Billy Holiday, uh, not Billy Idol, which for some reason I almost said. Billy Holiday and Billy Idol, very different people. Um, I'm not sure that Billy Holiday would sing Rebel Yell the same way that Billy Idol does, and I'm not sure that Billy Idol will be able to sell Strange Fruit as well as Billy Holiday does. But anyway, biography of Billy Holiday. <laughs> Uh, this is a Lindsay Ellis book. So Lindsay Ellis was a, um, she's now a, a successful author, but um, she wrote this after being a very successful booktuber for ages or YouTuber. I don't know if it's a booktuber. She was she did a lot of political view uh, videos, political videos, and like video essays and stuff. And I think she ended up quitting YouTube because she got a lot, you know, she got a lot of um, hassle from it, and it all got a bit complicated i don't and i i started watching youtube after all that happened really or just at the tail end of it so i don't really know exactly what happened but it was kind of a political mess for her but uh axiom's end is a is a, a book that i saw um in the shop read the back looked interesting i did know who she was and i thought it might be interesting she's done she did a, i did see i had already seen some of her videos on science fiction and i thought she was an interesting woman um, this is a John Scalzi book, Agent to the Stars, which I think is quite underrated. Uh, it's hard to get, actually. So this is an American import I got from Forbidden Planet. But uh, not very easy to get over here. And it's a bit of fun. Uh, it's, it's, a, like, it's a bit of a double entendre of the uh, title because Agent to the Stars is the sort of phrase you might have got a lot when people were an agent for someone in Hollywood. But it's the stars as in... Uh, someone becomes like a Hollywood agent for an alien and that's the kind of premise for it, it's quite fun. Um, uh, this is a Kate Bush biography that's really good and a, this is the new version, so I've got the old version and this version under the IV, it's a really good book, recommend it and obviously I love Kate Bush very much. This is uh, a book by um, Barbara Tuckman. Um, which is a distant mirror, the calamitous 14th century. I am massively interested in the 14th century. Some of my f favourite, as in things I'm most interested in, happened then. And uh, this is a well-acclaimed book about the 14th century. And I did start to read it at the beginning of the year, but I need to pick it up again. So this is not this is not being shown. This video isn't being shown till the new year. So I may have finished it by then, but if not. It's, on, it's going to be on my immediate TBR if I hadn't finished it because I need to finish this. But yeah, it's really good. Okay. Uh, this is two examples of many books and I know I've got more but they were right at the back of the loft and this is two Monty Python books. So you've got the big red book. Obviously the joke is it's blue. <laughs> hey! Uh, and then the uh, brand new Monty Python paperback uh, which was one of the, I think these two were the, two of the first books that came out um, from the Monty Python team. Uh, I've got a massive script book of Life of Brian. I don't think I've shown that in these videos. And it's really cool because one half of it is the script. And then if you flip it over, it's a massive thing. If you flip it over, it's like a, uh, a the making of Life of Brian in the book, which is really cool. Um, very cool biography of Crosby, Stills and Nash which almost went during the unhaul. So close. It's really good though, but I was trying to be harsh. Trying to be, you know, not, not harsh enough then, Gareth, right? Not harsh enough, all right. Um, so Bertrand Russell book, Roads to Free, Free, Freedom, no, Freedom. Bertrand Russell, Roads to Freedom, which uh, is really good, really, really good. Um, so it's kind of his take on the current political climate at the time. Um, Okay, there's Kindred by Octavia Butler, uh, which is awesome. Um, oh, okay, that's interesting. This is an A-level book, Great Britain and the Irish Question. So if you want to know about Irish history and the, the reason why there's been such um, so many problems between... Uh, Ireland and the rest of Britain this is a good way to start looking at the Irish problem from that that for that far back 
Um, you have to look at it that far back really to understand it. Uh, Sylvain Nouvelle, The Test. This is really good. And this I recommended this in a video about short books. It's really short, but it's really good. It's a citizenship test that goes awry. Um, it's really good. Um, it's my copy of Hyperion. I realise it's quite a long video, but I don't really want to do these endless um, library tour videos. So I'm hoping that this is enjoyable, but I'm not going to do another one after this, I don't think. Uh, long story short, that's the short story collection from the... Chronicles of St. Mary's. So uh, I love that series. So I'm looking forward to getting to that. Talented Limited to Ripley. I bought this on the back of Criminoli talking about his project, reading lots of different Patricia Highsmith books. And I thought, yeah, it's about time I gave her a go, especially as I'm reading more crime lately as well anyway. Um, Waking Gods is really good. Um, so uh, definitely recommend you read this. And again, uh, Sylvain Nouvelle, interesting writer, I think. This is my favourite music biography. Yeah, it is. This Wheel's on Fire by Levon Helm. I'm a big fan of the band, and this has got their entire story. It's really, really good. It's really interesting. Uh, so, yeah, very pleased to have this. Bought this in foils um, a couple of years ago. And then um, there's The Far Left in the English Revolution, 1640 to 1660, by Brian Manning. Brian Manning is a socialist, and he was quite happy to, um, so actually he's professor of history at the University of Ulster, um, but I know that he has got, um, he's left-leaning, um, but I think that's really good because the people that aren't left-leaning who talk about the Civil War don't like talking about the people that were on the fringes of it, that were real, really radical, very radical period, and this is what this is about. So, very awesome. Um, this is a book that... Uh, I literally recognised the uh, title and the author's name, but I don't really know a lot about it, and I thought I'd give it a go. Um, so, um, I don't know if you've read Half of a Yellow Sun. Let me know if you have, because I just got it out of curiosity. It was only like 50p or something, and I thought, oh, oh I should get that, uh, which is what I'm trying to do less of lately. Um, but, uh, yeah, that could be really good. And then three more to finish. You've got the sequel to We Are Bob, um, by Dennis E. Taylor uh, for We Are Many so I'm hoping my reread will make me chomping at the bit to read this one because uh, We Are Legion, We Are Bob definitely didn't hit me the first time round um, but I'm going to reread it again this it was a present from my really good friend uh, it was a lovely present the classic fantasy collection and it's got H.P. Lovecraft, Robbie E. Howard uh, Arthur Macken, H.G. Wells uh, all sorts of people on it and lots of different stories they'd written. It's a very nice hardback book uh, and a very awesome present. It's Reaching Into Thought, The Minds of the Great Apes. I have mentioned this before in my first non-fiction video I did, and I love this book. This book is absolutely brilliant. If you are interested in The Minds of the Great Apes, the way the great apes behave, how similar they are to us, we are one of the great apes. What I mean by that is how similar the other great apes are to us and um you know proper research into their behavior and their cognitive abilities all that kind of stuff then re read this book is fantastic re reaching into thought the mind of the great ape is it's literally one of the best books i've ever read and one of for me one of the most important ones as well um i've got a book based on the storyteller so um this is really cool this is the uh, fairy stories that um got dramatized in the series the storyteller but in um, a form where it's like a book to read to your kids, which is cool. Um, okay, this is Value and Virtue in a Godless Universe. <laughs> um, so I've got quite a lot of atheist books, and they've probably been scattered through these videos, and I find it really interesting, and I definitely, definitely believe, not just you can have an ethical world without religion, but... I think there's more chance of it being ethical without religion personally, but it's a personal thing. Um, absolutely respect anybody's beliefs, but that's what I believe personally. Um, this is a book that I've noticed is in Cliff's shelves behind him in his videos. Um, Cliff from Cliff's Dark Gems. Hi Cliff, if you're watching this. Um, yeah, Cold Heart Canyon. If you want to buddy read this, I'll be up for that because I haven't read this. And, uh, and since I've seen it on your shelves, I'm like, Oi Cliff, do you want to read this? You've probably already read it, but there we are. I saw it on your shelves. 
Okay. Oh. This one I found in the shop and I just couldn't resist it. I don't know why. Um, it's really, I don't know, it's a bit odd. The Strange Disappearance of a Bollywood Star. Um, and I think the author, I can't read that writing. I think the author is a um, British Asian author, I think. But anyway, I'm not sure. If I get to this, I'll tell you all about it. It certainly looks intriguing. Intriguing enough for me to get it. Uh, this is a classic, um, something from my childhood that uh, I think this is the third time I've owned this book. So I'll get rid of it and then I end up buying it again. Star Smashers of the Galaxy Rangers. Very uh, light-hearted science fiction from Harry Harrison. This is one of my three favourite Claire North books. I just talked about um, two others. Uh, so my favourite is a book called Touch, which I must have mentioned on here already. And this is The Sudden Appearance of Hope um, by Claire North. The Pearl, um, John Steinbeck. Oh, I've got a bunch of John Steinbeck over here somewhere. Where are they gone? Mm. Oh, they're over there. Okay, I'm going to get to John Steinbeck's in a second. But there's the Pearl anyway. So I've got loads of John Steinbeck. This is That's one. <laughs> I'll put that aside for a minute. I'm just curious to see how many there. Um, okay, so let's talk about the fairy tale stuff. So there's Philip Pullman's Grim Tales. So downstairs, I've got my Hans Christian Andersen book and my Complete Brothers Grimm. And this is a modern retelling by Philip Pullman. This is really good. But I'm going to reread it for this challenge I've got. Um, there's the Tales from a Thousand and One Nights. That's a penguin copy. It's a really nice copy, actually. Um, and I was really excited to have it because it's just really lovely. But it doesn't... I don't think it has the ones I thought it was going to have. <laughs> in there um but it's very nice uh it's a very good posh book so yeah and the tales from a thousand one nights the arabian nights and then you've got a lovely book here chinese fairy tales and fantasies um that was one that um i put on my christmas list and i got that so this is a really cool series by uh, the pantheon fairy tale and folklore library and uh i need to put that somewhere safe to be fair um, in a similar way, same series, I've got Norwegian folk tales here. So that's pretty awesome. I did talk about these in the introduction video to, um, to the, the challenge. But since then, I've, done, I've been pretty bad at doing the challenge. So two more books on the Arabian Nights. So this is the um, Penguin one, um, Penguin popular classics one. So... Um, again, they'll have different stories in them. This is the um, Collins Classics, Arabian Nights as well. So the three of them combined should have a nice broad spectrum. This one's Japanese Myths and Legends. Um, there's a few of these I've got, so they're not included in these videos, but somewhere I've got um, a few of these. I've got an African one and another one. And then there's Aesop's Fables, which... I was intending to read after the Brothers Grimm one. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's huge and I haven't got very far in it. So that's an ongoing project. And then this is a really good book that I was dying to have. And it was a good excuse for me to get it when I started the challenge, which was from The Beast of the Blonde by uh, Mariner Warner. So Mariner Warner's done a bunch of different books about fairy tales. And this is definitely one I'd, I'd, I'd known about for ages and I wanted it. But I want to get her others as well. But this was the first one to get. So I'll, I will definitely do a review of this book, um, but I'll be doing this in the context of the challenge. So I don't know when that will happen. But next, now this year, and as you're seeing this, there'll be lots of that sort of stuff going on. And then one more from that thing, that lot, I think. I think that's the last, oh, no, it's not the last one. There's a few actually. No. See, I've got quite a lot of these. Um, I've got quite a lot of folktale ones. So there's um, Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman, which was a fairly recent release and very popular. But I've also got Viking folk tales here as well, which I bought in York uh, a little while ago. Well, in May, in fact. So I want to say a little while ago, quite a while ago now, I guess. But I bought the Viking folk, tale, folk tales as well for this challenge. And talking of that challenge, the whole idea came from me finding this. Now, this is a massive hardback, huge thing. 
and it just really intrigued me. It's beautiful condition. Um, the Sephardic folktale, A Heart is a Mirror, and it's um, got really in-depth uh, look into the um, folk tradition of the uh, Sephardic Jews. So, um, yeah, definitely something that made me think, oh, I'm going to do a, a general investigation, and I was just so pleased to see this. I saw it secondhand. Um, it's quite expensive for a second-hand book, but it's beautiful condition, and it's the sort of thing you don't see very often, so I couldn't resist it. So, the heart is a mirror. And, um, yeah, that's all the folk tale stuff. So, what else have I got here? So there's the uh, modern classics, Penguin Modern Classics, One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich. Denisovich. So I didn't know much about it, but I couldn't resist it. It's a Penguin Classic. And uh, it's one fifty in a charity shop. Give it a go. Um, it looks thoroughly miserable, um, so I need to be in the right frame of mind to read it. But I'm going to definitely read it. Yeah, so there's also Joe Haldeman's Mars Bound. So I've got a bunch of his stuff, probably mostly in the videos where I talked about the sci-fi boxes. There's a bunch of Joe Haldeman stuff. But I really like his stuff a lot. I said the word stuff quite a lot then. Um, this is a book by Mark Watson, who's a British comedian. And I quite like him. And then this was there. He's written a few books, actually. But I was going to investigate more if I like this one. This is a book called Eleven. I think it's a kind of a wry comedy about relationships. I think. A wry comedy. This is Handling the, the Undead, which is by the author of Let the Right One In. John Avidi Lindquitz. Not really sure how to say his name. But um, like Let the Right One In is a, obviously a classic. So, yeah, that looks interesting. The Fifth Head of Cerberus by Gene Wolfe. Gene Wolfe has got a very important reputation. And uh, I've read one of his books and didn't like it that much. I haven't read the really famous quartet. I think it's a quartet of books. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've got this to read. <laughs> um, Raymond Feist Magician. Absolute classic. And that's my copy. Uh, Elric, this is one of my Elric books, um, so this has got uh, a lot of the Elric Mel Mel Melnibony books in it, um, but I've started collecting the individual books as well, again, collecting them again, but Michael Moorcock is awesome. Um, this is, these are two books by Christopher Moore, so you've got Second Hand Souls, which is a sequel to A Dirty Job, which I'm sure I've uh, I've had in a previous video in this library tour, Second Hand Souls, which is the sequel, and Lamb, which is, I think, by the looks of it, a um, parody of Christianity, I think. Uh, this is a book that Rachel from Shades, uh, Shades of Orange <clears throat> has talked about, I think, in her videos, Tim Pratt's The Wrong Stars, so I need to read this. Um, I've had this for a while, actually. I bought this in Forbidden Planet. I need to read it. Um, another one I, I bought because it looked really interesting, Tenlo, um, by Stark Holborn. Uh, and uh, I've seen this in the back of Criminali's shelves when he's doing his videos. <laughs> I don't know if he's read it, but uh, there's that one. Uh, this is one of two copies I have of Old Man's War. This is a brilliant book. And uh, I think John Scalzi is really good. But uh, this is his most, well, his, his most famous serious book because he's obviously famous for red shirts as well. Uh, oh, there's another John Scalzi there, The Angel's Dream, which I started. There's not a lot of examples of DNFing in my collection and in my experience, but I DNF this. I read about 10 pages and thought, nah, so I need to read this again. I need to pick it up and give it another go. I'm sure it was me. Uh, that book I've talked about before, uh, I was so pleased to find it. Addie Edmonds' book about Thelma Todd, Hot Toddy. This is all about her mysterious death. Uh, and I'm going to read this at some point. This year, I'm going to read it. Promise myself. Okay. <clears throat> I love this book very much. This is Monkey Planet. Renamed in the film Planet of the Apes by Pierre Boulet. Uh, so, yeah, Monkey Planet. This is brilliant. I love this book. I love the way... I love its differences to the film as well. Um, another film... Another book that became a film, Fight Club there... Uh, which I've already mentioned, it's something I would like to read. 
Uh, and then the invention of sound, which is another Chuck Palahniuk, Palahniuk, Palahniuk book. Oh, and another Christopher Moore one, Fluke. So they've been together look, um, for a while. I think this is this. That's a parody of Moby Dick, I think. But I'm not sure. I haven't read it. Um, right now we've got a bunch of. Well, I'm, I'm going to take them last actually because. Because I'll talk about Kafka first. The Essential Kafka. So this is a great book. And uh, I love Franz Kafka. So there we go. So this is a really nice Wordsworth one. Okay. Steam through these Steinbecks. I'll steam through the Steinbecks. Um, so he, I've got quite a lot. And uh, I think he's awesome. I've already mentioned the pearl. But then we've also got... Where did I put it? can't see where I put the pearl. Anyway. There's... One of my copies of Advice and Men. There's another one here. Hold on. There's two copies there of Mice and Men. I like that one the most. But I've got several copies of Mice and Men, which is his most famous one. Sweet Thursday, which is set in the same place as Canary Row. What an awesome cover. Sweet Sweet Thursday. There's a pan book. Uh, the Winter of Our Discontent. So quite a bleak one of his. Um... The Short Reign of Pippin the Fourth. I haven't read this yet, but it looks crazy. Um, so, yeah. Have you read that? I'd love to know if you've read that. Because I don't think it's typical of what he does. In Dubious Battle, that's another one of his I've got. I've got, I've got a lot here. Um, which is um, a kind of family relationship kind of one. Tell me if you've read In Dubious Battle. Um, there's two biggies. Um, I've got two different um, versions of the Grapes of Wrath. So I'm not sure where the other version is. But I've got two versions of the Grapes of Wrath. I've got a book that he wrote about uh, King Arthur, which is really weird. Um, but, but John Steinbeck wrote a book about King Arthur. And I've got East of Eden there. And to finish off the video, my favourite John Steinbeck, Canary Row. Uh, so I, I really like Canary Row. I think it's a beautiful novel that um, had me gripped by the prose, which is not something I'd say very often. Um, I'm not that kind of reader, but Steinbeck, I don't know. There's something about the way he writes. There we are. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what you think about those books. Sorry, it's been a bit long, but I'm trying to make this the last one of the library tour. Thanks a lot. Bye.